Well hello and a warm welcome back to another week on my plot. Um, it's a bit overcast this morning, quite chilly. Um, we've had a bit of drizzle but um, generally speaking the weather is is much much better. We have significantly turned a corner and um, we're starting to crop. I'm picking strawberries every day. The strawberries are a lot better than I expected. The few raspberry plants that I've got left after the main plant died um, are, are cropping a few and that loganberry is doing very well. So, we're, and the blueberries, are, I've had one picking of blueberries so they're starting. So yeah, we've def definitely turned a corner. Um, I have lost some crops, some crops are not good and I'll explain that in a minute. But um, things are growing. At last, there is significant and visible growth on the plants I've put in the ground. And we'll have a look around and I'll show you exactly what I mean in a moment. But it's sunrise. It's actually ten past five. Um, so there is a bit of a, a sunrise going on, but not much. The weather has been a lot better. This week has been lovely, sunny and hot or warm. So, yeah, things are getting better. Um, you know, I can sense my own frustration looking back at when I've edited my videos. Um, and it has been a difficult spring. But um, I hope, you know, you're finding the same, that things are now moving on. So, welcome along. Um, I'm going to have a brew first of all, and then we'll have a look round and see what's moving and what's not. Well, it's not really vegetable related, but I do love this verbena. Um, it came from one of the other plotters. He's got a very thick um, area of verbena and he said it's a blimmin' weed. If you want some, take some. So I have. Thank you, Paul. And they're lovely. Um, the rest of the flower bed is just weeds and grass, I think. <laughs> but actually, I, I even like that. I like the grass in amongst the verbena. It's quite a nice effect. But anyway, let's concentrate on fruits and vegetables, shall we? Well, as I said, things are significantly and visibly moving and growing. So here I find it very pleasing to the eye. The winter squash mashed potato, they are definitely bulking up. Very happy with that. They, they're not trailing plants. They will sit bush-like. So um, I won't have to fight these. They'll sit where they are, I hope. But yeah, they're moving, which is good news. Another milestone is the black currants. Cheryl popped up briefly yesterday. She nearly caught me having an old man's half hour in the shed. Luckily, I'd come out just in time. But um, she's coming up today to start picking black currants. That's always a good sign of summer arriving on the plot. I know it's hard to see through the Enviromesh, but the brassicas are doing well. Um, I don't tend to water the brassicas, they tend to have to manage on their own unless it really is very, very hot and dry for a prolonged period. Um, and the Brussels sprouts are doing well. They are really bulking up and growing away. I do need to take this net off at some point and get in there and weed it. Maybe that is a job for today. But um, yeah, very happy with their progress. I spent a long, tedious hour yesterday in both the tomato beds, just um, side shooting and tying them in. But it will be worth it in the long run. We do like our tomato sauces. Um, you will be aware that my, my real disappointment this year has been the broad beans. And this is my second sowing. And although there are signs of growth and there are some flowers, I don't really hold out much hope for a crop. Um, Cheryl scolded me yesterday and told me to be patient not my strong point but um, we'll see and my theory about purple vegetables seems to be holding true I don't think the cabbage white and other pests are interested in anything that's purple which is a good sign that means it's full of protective antioxidants which keep the pests away and are really good for us so um, so far so good and just beyond that is the second cropping or sowing of beetroot. Um, I've watered them in, I planted them a few days ago, and I've liberally doused them in slug pellets. Um, and so far, so good. 
this bed of garlic is coming out today, going home to be dried and stored. It looks blimmin' awful, but I don't think the, the rust affects the, the food stuff that much. Um, and the other, I mean, the significant disaster this year is the onions. I've lost two beds of onions to slugs, I suspect, and this bed, which looks blimmin' awful. Cheryl usually complains that my onions are way too big, and she came up yesterday and said, oh, these are too small. You can never please a wife, can you? She's so ungrateful. <laughs> but, yeah, these have been in all winter, and some of them haven't moved beyond the size of a spring onion. So, we, you know, we're going to have to put our hand in our pocket this year for onions, and that's a disaster. Because, that, you know, as you know, if you cook, they're in almost every meal you prepare. So, yeah, not good news. But I'm going to leave them another... Some of them are flopping over. And I've told Cheryl if she wants an onion, we can start to use these. Um, and I've watered them this morning, hoping that they'll put on a bit of a bulking up shoot. But it doesn't look likely. Butternut Sweet Max. Sown the 23rd of April and planted the 27th of May. And once again, I hope you can see, look, that's... These are trailing plants, and they'll have to be restricted to this bed, um, which I usually fail to do. But, um, yeah, they're now growing away, um, so really happy with that. And further to that, you can see here, um, my initial first sowing of beetroot is now bulking up, and I've got um, some nice bulbous roots on that, so very happy with that. So, um, although I did lose some to the slugs, I had replacements, and those replacements have survived. And um, I've got a little bit more uh, comfrey feed to process today and to put into the plastic bottles. But the bottom of that drum has rusted through, so I'm losing a lot of the liquid that's falling out either side of what I'm catching it in. And I do have a replacement metal drum, so I think I'll have to do that today if I get time drill a hole in the bottom and replace that and put some more comfrey in. The comfrey feed is um, is the only uh, fertiliser I make on the plot, apart from my uh, compost, so that's important. So hopefully I'll get around to that today. Um, I've been reading this book out for so long, I'm probably repeating myself, but um, who cares? British trains arriving up to nine minutes late are counted as being on time. <laughs> goes to show how shoddy our train system is. In 2017, a Japanese rail company apologised after one of its trains departed 20 seconds early. How different are the standards? 590,000 Britons turn up late for work each day, costing the economy £9 billion a year. And of course, since the pandemic, those 590,000 probably don't turn up at all now. In Qing Dynasty, China, the penalty for lateness was death. What a good idea. Mail theft in the US was a capital offence until 1872. Donald Trump is the first US president in 168 years not to have a pet in the White House. US President Zachary Taylor had never voted in a presidential election before he voted for himself. <laughs> the world's oldest footprints are half a billion years old. The yellow-billed oxpecker bird sleeps in the armpit of a giraffe. A male giraffe drinks the urine of a female giraffe to see if she is ovulating. <laughs> oh, thank goodness our courtship practices are a little simpler. I think, I remember. Well, I mentioned in a previous episode that I hadn't had to tie the peas in this year. Um, and of course, because I haven't tied them in, they've got a bit uh, 
irregular um, and you know half the half the path is obscured but I don't mind that um, it's lovely to see them looking so healthy I do water them every time I come out but um, I think uh, we Cheryl and I had a pod each yesterday afternoon they were a bit small but nevertheless they were extremely sweet and tasty so uh, I think maybe maybe next weekend we might pick some or maybe this week um, and I've got spinach so we might try a pea and spinach soup and these strawberry plants that I bought just a couple of weeks ago sweet colossus um, I'm really surprised they're going to produce um, some strawberries I mean I, you know they're only they're not even a year old these plants but um, yeah very happy I mean I've got a sneaky feeling that the blackbirds will get the fruit before I do so I might have to put a bit more chicken wire over these but um, yeah it looks like I might get a crop that'll be nice even if it's just a taster well um, courgettes this is Tondo di Plazenzo and it's a, a ball shaped courgette but um, there's a lot of them I mean the first few always rot off they do every year don't, maybe, maybe it's poor pollination. I don't know. I don't understand that. But it, it happens every year. It's not a problem. But a couple of those may go on to be full size. Very happy with that. Um, in contrast, this all green bush courgette really isn't moving much. I mean, it, it's, it's okay. It's making new leaves. But um, compared to the others, it really is quite poor. I'm sure in time it'll be fine. Um, and yeah, this uh, Soleil, the yellow courgette, I don't know, <laughs> the leaves have decided to come out yellow um, in support of the fruit. I've got a feeling that's got something to do with the chippings that I put in this bed back in the winter. Um, anyway, it's producing fruit and I give it a feed of comfrey feed every time I water it, so I'm sure it'll be okay. Haven't taken a picking of rhubarb recently, and it won't be long before I stop picking it entirely for the year. But um, so we might take a picking today. And the main crop, potatoes are looking good. I've given those a good drink this morning. Um, earthed up as much as I'm going to. But let's go and have a look at the pumpkins. And there you have it. The plant sat dormant in shock for a few weeks, didn't like the weather and the cold and the rain but it's held its own and it's now starting to move out across the plastic um, and as I've said before there's three zombie pumpkins here and all the others are Charmont they're on my own saved seed which it always thrills me that I've managed to grow plants from the seed I saved um, and these ones here are the same Charmont um, they're doing okay. I think the plant on the end is going to be a little bit um, less vigorous because it's in a bit of shade from that apple tree for quite a bit of the day which I cut back significantly this week. Um, but yeah they're looking good and looking good uh, are the purple pea, purple magnolia. I've had a few pickings. In fact, one day I, my lunch consisted of just boiling up uh, for a minute or two these purple peas. They were lovely. And oddly, in amongst the purple peas are normal peas. don't understand how that works. Anyway, I don't mind that. But yeah, they couldn't look better. As could not these other potatoes, Java and Charlotte. All looking good as are the two pump, spare pumpkin plants in the old wheelbarrow over there. Nobody's said anything to me yet about pinching another bit of land. I'm not really pinching it, I'm just putting something on it so that it's not wasted ground. Well, the compost heap is doing all right. In fact, I can feel the heat. I've just lifted the plastic cover I can feel the heat coming out of there just stood here. That's incredible. Fantastic. And at the back of the plots, 
local tree surgeons have been busy. Lovely lot of uh, chippings. Very welcome indeed. Might get my new wheelbarrow active. And put some of them on my paths. Well that's it, that's my whole garlic crop, nowhere near as good as previous years but the size of the uh, garlic is, is fairly, uh, is okay, acceptable, um, how long that lasts us I'm, I'm not sure, we normally get twice that, anyway that's what we've got. How long can a chicken live without its head? About two years. On the 10th of September 1945, a plump young cockerel in Colorado had his head chopped off and lived. Incredibly, the axe had missed the jugular vein and left enough of the brain stem attached to the neck for him to survive and even thrive. That's incredible. Mike, as he was known, became a national celebrity, touring the country and featuring in Time and Life magazines. His owner, Lloyd Olson, charged 25 cents for a chance to meet Mike the Headless Wonder Chicken. In sideshows across the USA, Mike would appear complete with a dried chicken's head purporting to be his own. In fact, the Olson's cat had made off with the original. <laughs> At the height of his fame, Mike was making $4,500 a month and was valued at $10,000. His success resulted in a wave of copycat chicken beheadings, though none of the unfortunate victims lived for more than a day or two. Mike was fed and watered using an eyedropper. In the two years after he lost his head, he put on nearly six pounds and spent his time happily preening and pecking for food with his neck. One person who knew Mike well commented 
He was a big fat chicken who didn't know he didn't have a head. Tragedy struck one night in a motel room in Phoenix when Mike started to, Mike started to choke and Lloyd Olson, to his horror, realised he'd left the eyedropper at the previous day's show. Unable to clear his airways, Mike choked to death. Mike remains a cult figure in Colorado and every May since 1999, the town of Fruta has marked his passing with a Mike the Headless Chicken Day. Wow. Fascinating. The world is a fascinating place. Well, I don't mind admitting it, I'm worn out. But a good day, another good day. Nice to see Cheryl up here, we had a lovely lunch. Um, and we've picked our first punnet of blackcurrants. And when I say we, <laughs> I just it's find it so boring, but she just, I don't know, she just has that patience. Anyway, yeah, good day, lots done. Glad to get those new chippings down. They're very aromatic obviously um, some kind of conifer they've been cutting and it smells lovely but I've gone halfway down with the main path and I'll do a bit more this week so thank you for joining me thanks to all those who subscribed um, I've managed to edge over the 700 subscribers and stay there for now um, so thank you to everybody um, and hopefully I shall see you next weekend until then look after yourselves take care bye for now